wonderful world of Disney. Pussy cats. My friend here paints stripes on. Hey, you. You fix tires? Yeah. Good. Not this one, though, I can't fix. It's rim cut from one end to the other. Mm. Well, they'll bring back Kelso. He'll just have to buy a new one to put on. The only trouble is this size. I wouldn't have that in stock. Oh. Is there someplace else? Oh, I can get it for you. I can phone into town and have him send it out on the bus. It'll take a little time, that's all. Look over there! Hey. Looks like the circus has come to town, huh? Come on, Smokey, let's go see. They don't let Smokey start anything he can't finish. I better get rolling. Oh, get home early. I hear there's going to be fog again tonight. The county campaign committee's having another meeting. I promised them. I'd be there, so I don't know how long it's going to take. You better not wait up. We'll drive carefully Bye. in that fog. Yeah. Bye. I've told you. I don't know how many times I've told you. Don't start out without a spare. Yeah, will I? Yeah, will I? Hey, you. How long will it take to get the tire? Oh, a couple of hours, maybe. All depends on how the bus is running. You go ahead and order it. Here's my credit card. Yes, sir. You two wait here for that tire. And then you catch up with us in Bayview. Now you got that straight. All right, let's get those trucks started. The tigers. We did not feed them this day. And if you're going to be late tonight, then... You just better not be late now. That's all I got to say. And you, stay out of that tavern. You hear me? Bill, one. Everything all right? Oh, it's just a blowout. But I gotta send into town for a tire. Oh. You wouldn't be coming right back out again, would you, Pete? Very not. This close to election, I gotta at least look like I'm working. I figured that. <laughs> I figured that. Hey. 
Aren't you going to kiss your poor old father goodbye? Whoop. Bye-bye. You uh, call us when everything's ready. My friend and I will find a place to sit down. But Mr. Kelso said... Ah, Mr. Kelso said. Mr. Kelso said. I heard what Mr. Kelso said. You call us, huh? I'm the one who does all the work. Makes the tigers behave. All Kelso does, he cracks the whip and takes the balls. I have seen many men handle tigers. Kelso is good. You've seen nobody handle tigers. When I handle them, they'll do things you wouldn't believe. You would not last two minutes with the tigers. They can tell when a man is afraid. Afraid? You think I'm afraid? They're afraid. Because I always show them who's boss. Mister, down about an octave, please. Oh. Now, don't you listen to my friend. He's stupid. All he knows how to do is clean the cages. I come from the land of the tigers. I know what they would do to him. Let go. <laughs> nice little hand. Let go. <laughs> Let go! You watch it, mister. Uh, uh, what is Joseph? A tiger, huh? Oh, I know how to take care of tigers. I'll have one for the road. Oh, I think you've had enough. I'll tell you when I've had enough. I'll... I'll let you keep your dirty nose in your teapot, or I'll put it there for you. Stop it! <laughs> whatever you owe, including the glass, 60 cents, then you get out of here. Oh, I still can't see a darn thing. Well, you can hear them. I don't know what's in there. Maybe it's a couple of big dogs or something. Up, Tom. Stop teasing everybody. You know there are tigers in there. If you want to prove it, why don't you stick your finger in there? Hey, look out! Here come the tiger men! What are you running for? <laughs> Good afternoon. Mister, there are tigers in there, aren't there? Oh, no. They're just pussycats. <laughs> oh, you um, you want to trade pussy cats with me, huh? <laughs> no? I bet you want to see what I got to trade first, huh? <laughs> All right, open it up. He's gonna open it up. You the guy that makes those tigers do tricks and stuff? Tricks and stuff? I'm Joe Pites. I can make tigers do things that you wouldn't believe. And this is my assistant, Ram Singh, who finds a safe place to hide. Open it up! <laughs> This one for your pussy cat, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like that, kitty? <laughs> what are you doing, Let's Joseph? Go. Get out of here! You'd like to get me, wouldn't you? All right. Children, back! Crazy. <laughs> Probably keep 
keep showing off as long as we'll watch. Come on. I'll show you who's boss. <laughs> Of money. Yeah, lots of money. Now, you're not going to have it all downhill the way you did before. Pete, they're really putting the pressure on this time. I remember right. That's what you said the last time, too. I'm serious. Now, look, we got some TV time on Hello. Tuesday night. We've got some of the boys Hello. here together to write you a nice little speech. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Wait a minute. What? Hey, Sheriff, you went on the phone. They say it's an emergency. How about it, Pete? Well, give me time to think it over, can't you? Yeah. I've never seen a man who hit yeah. you. Makes... Sheriff, this is Betty. Something's happened to Julie. One of the tigers got loose from the truck. What? Tell me just a minute, Chris. How bad is it? What? Hello, Sheriff. Uh, this is Bill Watkins. Julie's all right. No, the tiger never touched her at all. She just fell down when she ran to get away. Yeah, from the tiger. Well, where's the tiger now? Well, he, he headed for that bushy area. You know, back of town. I'll get some of the boys together right away and... Now, wait a minute. Hold it, Dub. Uh... Now, look, I'll get there as soon as I can, but you get the word around town to keep the people off the streets, here. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. How many men you want? I'll have them here for you when you arrive. Pete, you can't run out on us. we got to get this thing nailed down. I'm sorry, Joe. i got to catch a tiger first. About this airtime, I think that... What did he say? Catch a what? A tiger. Oh. Here's Bob Evans up in Skillshire. I'd like to talk to the city desk, please. Evans. Yeah, Bob Evans. Uh, in Scotia. Oh, I've sent you things before, but, but this is big. I mean, really big. I mean, big, big, big. Uh-huh. Mr. Blondin, it's that Evans guy from Scotia. Not again, I told you. Now, he says it's really big. Big, big, big. Not a poem this time. 
Chance to scoop the whole country won't tell it to anybody but you. It's on three. London City Editor. Let me have it. Just in the tiger. <laughs> A tiger walks the streets of Scotia today while a tiger, T-I-G-E-R. A tiger walks the streets of Scotia today while residents cower within their homes, gripped by the primitive fear that jungle people have known through the centuries. Now, come off of it. Just tell me in simple words what happened. Now, how did he get loose? Oh, well, that comes later. Down here in the third paragraph, it says, well, it's just that the circus offer was going through town. Uh, sure, sure. It's a Kelso's Wild Animal Show. Get him to mention the name of the horseshoe and I'll pay for the phone call. Riley. Oh, oh, go ahead. Riley, better get up to Scotia right away. Uh, it seems to be a tiger loose. A what? Would you spell that again for me, please? Uh, T-I-G-E-R. A tiger get going. the streets of Scotia. Better take a photographer along. Get plenty of pictures. Good close shots. Ripped by the primitive fear that jungle people have known through the centuries. That's right. She's all right. The doc took some x-rays. He says there's nothing to worry about. What about those two handlers? Well, I haven't seen hide and hair of them since they went into the brush. Oh, great. When the fog's setting in, we better be ready to move out of here. We'll use my car in your pickup, all right, Mel? Right. Everybody got a flashlight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got them. All right, look, we'll go out. Sheriff, how big a jolt do you think it'll take? Knock a tiger off its feet. Well, you hit him square with that, and that ought to be enough. Now, look, don't go blazing away at anything unless you're sure it's the cat. I'm worried about those two guys out there with nothing than a net and empty shotgun. Well, everything happened so fast, Pete. Before I could holler at him, not he was your gone. Fault. It's not your fault, Bill. Brian, you're gonna you're... take off right now. Remember, Duck home, see how Julie is. Have him ready to leave in five minutes. Fine. I better get some place to sleep. We'll need a couple of rooms, Mrs. Watkins. How long do you think it's gonna take to find that tiger? Oh, it could be tonight. Might not find him for a week. If he gets up into the high country, it's going to be rough. Hmm. Well, I'll charge you just the same as I usually do. Five dollars each. That's fine. Only thing, I'll have to put you both in the same room. That's... Both in the same room? Now, wait a minute, that's Mrs. Watkins. That's not Watkins. one penny more than you usually pay. I, I just feel it's my duty, that's all. Your duty? Well, I have to keep some rooms for other folks who might need a place to sleep. Reporters, photographers, goodness knows how many people might be coming up here. You're very thoughtful, Mrs. Watkins. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear Mrs. Watkins. She never misses a chance to do her simple Christian duty. <laughs> as long as there's a buck in it. You sure that's all right, huh? It's just fine, Daddy. The doctor just said it was bruised and scratched a little. Just scratched a little. When you think what could have happened, keep soaking. It wasn't the tiger's fault, Daddy. All he did was run away. The man kept poking at him with a stick and opening the cage door. Honey, it's not a question of whose fault it is. He's not a mean tiger, Daddy. Well, I wouldn't want him chewing you up even if he was a friendly tiger. If he wanted to hurt somebody, why didn't he come after Tom and me? Well, that's something, I suppose. Just because that stupid man wanted to show off and let him out of his cage. That's no reason to go shoot the poor thing like he's a criminal or something. I know. Now, now, dear, calm down. Keep soaking. Look, we'll just keep our fingers crossed and hope nobody has to shoot him, all right? So don't you worry about him. Well, I don't know when I'll get back, so I don't hold up dinner. Okay. It just doesn't seem fair. You can't go shoot somebody for something that's not their fault. Mother? Hmm? Daddy, he wouldn't let people do something. Would he, if he knew it was wrong? No, baby, he wouldn't. Now, hold still.
Hello? This is Sheriff Williams. Can you hear me? Well, let's spread out, try to keep in line. We're going down the car. Right. Yell out if you see anything. Just ripped to pieces. The tiger must have been waiting for him. Is he? Yeah, he's gone. Well, we might as well try to find the other guy. Sheriff, sure, you're. You're going to have to count me out. I've got a wife and kid at home. Not even a gun on the place until I get there. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to duck out, too. Same here. Man can't just run off and leave his family at a time like this. Look, you know... Uh, now, wait, wait, wait a minute. Just... Please. Look, I know how you feel. I don't blame you, but there's still another man out there. Now, we can't just take it for granted that he's beyond help. Sorry, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Look, can any of you stick with me? Let's at least get him out of here. Yes. Of course, somebody has to come and haul us out, too. Setting in, and with a blanket of fog reducing visibility even more, a wave of panic spreads across the little community of Scotia, where an escaped Bengal tiger roams the countryside. No other beast in the world attacks with more stealth, nor with more savage fury. 
An epic case is that of the man-eating Shapawat tiger, which within the course of its lifetime is known to have killed 434 men, women, and children, preying mostly upon isolated huts, striking in the dead of night, dragging its screaming victims off into darkness. In fog, of course, the tiger has an abnormal advantage, screened from view until the very instant of attack. And old-timers in Scotia have reason to shudder, for they recall the spring of... Turn it down, please, Bob. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'd like to do better, but this is the best I can offer you. That's not just a local newscast, Mrs. Watkins. It's going out all over the whole country. Well, keep it turned down, will you? A body can't hear herself do business. I'll move the cot in as soon as I can get upstairs. That'll be $10 each. $10 each? Three in a row? Sleep on a cot for 10 bucks? Well, I really should save this room anyhow. Bunch of radio men coming in from Weldon. So if you'd rather look somewhere else. Look somewhere else? In this whistle stop? We'll flip for the cut. Hey, they just hauled somebody into Doc Hadley's place. Looks like he's dead. He's dead. Just want to know what you found, that's all. Yeah, we found one of the handlers. The one with the empty shotgun. The tiger got him. This is what Victim number one. Hey, I got me a network full hey, come on. <laughs> Phone for official business. There's another phone in there. How about yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, 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 sir, sir. Hey, wait a minute. Wait just a minute, all of you. Uh, I want to ask you if you can hold up that story about us bringing a body in. Hold it up, Sheriff? Well, just for a while, anyway. The people are getting close to panic around here. It wouldn't take much more to set them off. We're here to get the news, Sheriff, not to suppress it. All right, that doesn't mean you can stand up in a crowded theater and yell fire. If that tiger's a man-killer, I figure the people ought to know about it. Will you at least make it clear that the man went into the brush chasing the tiger, that the tiger wasn't chasing him? Well, if you ask me, that's a subtle distinction. Sorry. I got a deadline. Right. Rowan? That's Pete Williams. Now, look, I'm going to need a little help up here. Well, I'd like to have the whole area sealed off. Sure, well, we could be up to our ears and curiosity seekers. Right. Pete! I appreciate it. The other handler just showed up. Spell it, will you please? Sing this, Angie. Did you find any kind of tracks around there? Joseph Pike. never killed anybody before. P I E T Z. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Give us a break, will you? Sure. Sure. Williams, you're the other handler, aren't you? Now, what happened? We were just oh. asking him what happened. <laughs> A minute. Now, what happened? It is too dark, too much fog. I come back. You find any sign of that tiger? I trailed him to an open field with tall grass, hills beyond, maybe two miles down the road. Then I could not find him anymore. That mm. sounds like the old Bixby place. Now, how thick was the fog? Sheriff, we came all the way down to get story. Do you happen to see your friend out there? By the time I found him, I could do nothing. He was dead. I thought I'd better keep after Roger. Now, this field you were talking about with the tall grass, you think the tiger's apt to stay in there or would he try to get into the hills? All he wants is to get away, to hide, to be free. It is hard to say. Now, what do you think's the best way to go about tracking him down? I would go alone with my net as soon as it is light enough so I can see. Alone? Well, maybe I would take one or two men along with nets also. Hmm. Please, Sheriff, do not send your men with guns. I can't take Roger alive. We can't afford to wait for that. But there's no need to shoot him. Now listen, mister. None of this was my idea. Your outfit came into this town and a tiger got loose. We didn't ask for any part of it, so don't you start laying down rules for us. All right? We're just trying to do our job as best we can. Please, may I go take care of my tigers in the truck? 
They're hungry and frightened. They do not understand. Sure, go on. Stay in town. I'll try to move that truck. We might have to impound it. Vern, go on with him. Now that he's made his first kill, you think Please, he's going to... Please, I must take care of my Have you ever killed anybody before? How about that story? Watkins, I'm going to need a temporary field headquarters so this thing's over. You think I could use that little officer's? Certainly, Sheriff. Glad to help out the county. I'll be honored to rent in my office. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. Yes, okay, now give her some more. How far away do you have to go? I have to cover this story. It really gets me some. You fed them? Mr. Wilson gave us some meat scraps over at the market. They were making so much noise you could hear them all over town. We thought they must be hungry. But the babies wouldn't eat anything. That's because they're little babies. They do not like to eat meat. What do they eat? You feed them with a baby's bottle. Tigers? <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh, do you really think she should not hurt her? It's just a kid. It's like a great big one. Honey, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Where do you live, honey? One for the kid. Oh, oh the claws are very sharp. <laughs> oh, look at the poor baby. It's hungry. It's so sweet. Oh, is that sweet? Look at that sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your name, That's wonderful. That's great. Maybe we get some pictures out of this. Come on. Sweetheart, you want to come over here for just a minute? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Would you get out of the way, please, sir? We'll take some pictures. Hey, bring the boy over. Bring the boy over. There you go, right there. All right, now, what do you say, John, huh? Well, they certainly don't look mean when they're that size, do they? How old do they have to be before they become man killers like the one that got loose? Roger is not a man killer. He is a good tiger. I have raised him since he was the size of this one. He just killed a man. If that doesn't make him a man killer, I don't know what does. You do not understand, Joseph. He was not a good man. Why can't I? Provoke the animals. You cannot blame Roger for yeah. killing on him after he. Yeah, all right, get it. You call him what you want. To me, he's still a man killer. Now that he's tasted blood, to be no Excuse stop. me. Dorothy! Uh, uh, Dorothy! Right. Is Pete in the hotel? Yes, why? The governor's calling. The governor? Yeah, the line is busy. The operator called me. Hey, maybe we finally got a story. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, fine. Nah, I call the weather bureau. They don't want to lift it. He's in here. How about tomorrow, anyway. Hey, uh, the governor's trying to get you. I'll call you back, Eddie. Yeah. Sheriff Williams. Yes, Governor. Well, uh, we. Yeah, yes, sir. That's right, sir. Well, actually, there isn't much we can do till the fog lifts, you see. Well, don't you think we should call out the National Guard? Well, I'd rather not, uh, at least not now. Yes, sir, I can, hand, I can handle the situation as long as the people don't panic. Well, I could alert General Hutton, have him move in the troops and let them stand by. Yeah. All right, it's your problem, Sheriff. Well, I want to go real easy and try not to drive the tiger up into the hills any higher if I can help it. Well, we could be chasing them two months that way. Yes, sir. Well, you get too many people prowling around those hills in this fog, and somebody's going to get shot. And it probably won't be the tiger, either. Well, I just want you to know that we are standing by, ready to help in any way that we can. Right? Right. Well, what did he say? He doesn't want the troops. He's afraid all that commotion will just drive the tiger up into the high hills. So what's he going to do? Nothing? Well, until this fog clears, there's nothing else he can do. Did he say that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's all you need. You can declare a state of emergency. Move in the troops. Now, we are not moving in there until we've given the sheriff a chance. No, but the sheriff admits he can't handle things. It's up to you. That's been our whole campaign. Decisive leadership. Well, here's a chance to prove it. That sheriff is... mighty popular. Now, look, Governor. 
I tell you, they'll crucify you if you just sit here twiddling your thumbs. This is the opportunity we've been praying for. There is one rule I have observed all of my life, gentlemen. Never be too fast to grab at an opportunity. It may turn out to be a hot potato. Hi. Hi. You don't have to get up. Hey, I'll make you a fresh pot, okay? Did you have anything to eat? I'm not hungry anyway. You didn't catch the tiger. I ain't got a chance with fog lifts. Well, that's getting to be one of my lesser worries now. The tiger? Oh, people are so stupid. They're spreading a lot of wild stories, trying to scare each other, I guess. All they do is scare themselves. Well, you can't blame them for being a little edgy, though. I mean, if he wanted to, a tiger could come right through a window like that, couldn't he? Well, now, don't you be ridiculous, too. In the first place, why would he want to? Well, I... He ran away, remember? He's trying not to get caught. That's what Mr. Singh said. Julie! All Raja wants to do is stay away from people. Hi, Daddy. What are you doing up, Missy? I heard you talking. Raja, he's still all right, isn't he? As far as I know, he's in a pinker condition. I just hope he's not too well fed, that's all. Mr. Singh said that Raj has never killed his own food. He won't even know how till he gets real hungry. Then some of his instincts may come back to him. Well, he's got his instincts back, all right. Look, honey, he hadn't been loose ten minutes until he'd killed a man. Yes, but that's different, though. Mr. Singh said that any tiger will kill somebody if they tease him and hurt his family. And Mr. Singh said... Look, I've had enough of Mr. Singh's arguments today without getting them secondhand and warmed over when I could come home. Um, hey, it's getting a little late. I think you better get up to bed. Wait, it's not Roger's fault that he's a tiger. That's where he was born. It must be what God wanted him to be. So you can't blame him for doing things that are perfectly normal for a tiger. And Mr. Singh says that... Good night, Mother. Just a minute. Come back here. Come here. Julie, look. You don't feel any more sorry for that tiger than I do. Now, I know it's not his fault. I know he can't help being what he is. And there's nothing I'd hate more than I have to shoot him. Now, I'm sure you can understand the position that your father's in. Oh, I do, Daddy. But the tiger's a father, too. And his little babies are only three months old. And Mr. S well, anybody that trained tigers will tell you that, that he wants to protect his family, just the same as you would, Daddy. If Mother and I were being attacked by some, some oh, great human beast... Wait just a minute. Now, all I'm trying to say is that we've got a situation here that... that hey, uh, why don't we talk about it tomorrow? Now, you get on up to bed. Good night. Good night. Good night, dear. Oh. Look, you talk to her tomorrow, will you? And just don't let her get off on another one of these things. All right, dear. I'll talk to her. Remembers the last time. 
Well, I sure ain't gonna go through that again. Come on, little Joe. You going inside and stay. Here, I'll have your breakfast ready by the time you throw milk in. Skunks. Never will lay an egg if you don't change up. All right, now, go on back in that stall. Get on back in that stall. All upset this morning. All of you. Lady, on down there. Oh, oh. It's good in you this morning, isn't it? All upset, all of you. Oh. What's the matter with you this morning? Get your... On the radio. There's a tiger loose. A what? Yeah, right around here somewhere. Oh, a tiger. Oh, well, you heard the way Bojo's been barking and carrying on, and the chickens squawking and all. Oh, now, Liddy. Yeah, and the calves, you heard them. That wouldn't be no skunk. They never carried on like that for any skunk. Oh, now, these things on the radio. What you probably heard was... A... I know what I heard, and you ain't going back out to that barn less than you have your rifle. And you watch out for that tiger, you hear me? Yes, Liddy. Whatever you say. Don't be any smart, Alex. Never get nothing done. Try to humor lady. All the ideas. Tiger. Hmm. Bojo, you stay here, don't you run off. Because that really is a skunk, I don't want to. Liddy was right. It is a tiger. Liddy, you was right. It was a tiger. Just don't go outside the house.
but investigators were unable to find any trace of the animal or to locate any tracks. Sheriff Williams, meanwhile, has requested that... And so, that is the situation in Scotia. The fog continues, the tiger still roams free in its fastness. And now, an eyewitness account from one of the principal actors in this frightening drama, Miss Julie Williams, who you see feeding the mother tiger and her two innocent cubs. Julie? Julie? Now, as I understand it, when the tiger broke out of his cage, you and the other children ran terrified. Oh, no, not really. Uh, you fell down. You were injured. You looked up. You saw this tiger coming straight toward you. What did you do? Well, I tried to get up, but I couldn't, not right away. And Tom here, he tried to pull one of the pickets off the fence, but it wouldn't come. Uh, how close was the tiger to you at this yeah, time? Yeah, that tire that was all gone. Oh, when was it? Mr. Watkins. Oh, yeah. What's happening? Yeah. What's Your Julie's on the television. Yeah? He could have killed both of us easy as anything, couldn't he, Tom? But you could tell he didn't want to. And now everybody wants to kill him, and it sure doesn't seem fair. You don't think the tiger ought to be killed? No, I don't. Mr. Singh says it's not necessary. It's not Raj's fault that he got loose. What you'd like to see is the tiger taken alive and returned to his uh, family here. Well, yeah, but what I really wish, I wish I had a lot of money. Then I'd buy them all and put them in a nice zoo or something. So they wouldn't have to stay in such little cages. And there wouldn't be anybody poking at him with sticks and things like that. Of course, I know Mr. Singh is awful nice and that, but it must be an awful life having to live in little cages like that. And then he doesn't have the complete say-so. He's just a kind of a hired man, I guess. Let's see now. Uh, your father is the sheriff here, isn't he? Uh, do you know how he feels about this whole thing? Oh, he feels the same as I do. You mean he wants the tiger taken alive? He doesn't want anybody to shoot him? He says you can't blame Raja for doing things that are perfect and normal for a tiger. He can't help being what he is. Well, now, if he doesn't want the tiger shot, do you know if that's the reason he requested the National Guard not be sent here? Well, I suppose so. Because all the soldiers would have guns and they'd probably be told to shoot it. Why else would they be sent here? I'm glad he told them not to come. Thank you, Julie. Well, well that's that does it. Sheriff of Weldon County. What does that sheriff think he's doing? The idiot! Well, now he has given me no choice. Get General Hutton on the phone. Tip off the press. Get me General Hutton, National Guard Headquarters. How could you do a thing like that? What's got into you? And just who gave you authority to speak for me anyway? He just died. Now, where did you get an idea like that in the first place? Who said that I wanted to take the tiger alive? You said so yourself only last night, don't you remember? I did not. I never said any such thing. You, you said you didn't want anybody to shoot Roger any more than I did. I... I said that that's the way I feel personally. But I also happen to be sheriff of this county. I've got responsibilities to the people. Now, Julie, you're old enough to understand that, aren't you? Now, Pete. Now, Pete. I thought you said that you were going to talk to her. I was going to talk to her. Well, why didn't you? Didn't you? I thought you'd be jump. thankful well, that Roger didn't hurt me. But you act like that's not important. Oh, sure, he saved my daughter's life, but you can't expect me to look out for him just because of a little thing like that. No. Oh, you take her out of here. Take her home. Go on. Seeing as you're charging the county $10 a day for that broom closet, would it be asking too much if you could give me something a little brighter than a 10-watt light bulb, please? Such a fidget. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. Relax, Bojo. I know this road like the back of my hand. You all right, boy? What am I gonna do, boy? Hmm? Can't just sit here. He used to want to run to the tiger down that way. Ah, 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 ah. You stay here, Bojo. You keep an eye on things. Ah, 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 ah. That dang it, boy. I'm going to have enough trouble picking away that you go wandering off. 
Trying to scare up a skunk? That's a good boy. between the governor's office and the National Guard. Captain Anderson, here's a copy of the governor's proclamation declaring a state of emergency, relieving you of responsibility in this affair. And from here on, you can... Say, hey, isn't that Riley of the Herald over there? Excuse me. Uh, Captain Anderson will fill you in. Thanks. Uh, Sheriff, uh, uh, the colonel wanted me to make clear something right from the start. What? Well, if one of our boys uh, brings down the tiger, we want to take the head. Well, the colonel plans to have it mounted in the officer's mess. <laughs> well, it is in every outfit, you know, gets assigned a tiger hunt in the line of duty. You're going to have to take that up with the people that own the tiger. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> well, there's something you can do for me, Sheriff. You can cue me in on where the tiger was seen last. You're not going to start out after him in this fog, are you? Sheriff, I was sent here with a job to do and orders to get on with it. Now, as I understand it... You'll never see him in this fog. All you can possibly do is drive him up into the hills. Yeah, those are my orders. And while the governor realizes he may be in for a certain amount of criticism, he told us, boys, this is no time for politics. We've got to think about the people down there. Oh, sure. The governor don't like to play politics. <laughs> like a duck don't like water. <laughs> <laughs> no smiles now. Remember, this is serious. Hey. Hey, you. Over this way. You don't want to take their picture. We're the tiger hunters. <laughs> them guys, we're just going to stake them out for bait. <laughs> hey, hey, take my picture. Hey, Maloney, get back in here. Hey, get... hey, come on, take my picture. Hey. Put it in your paper, huh? Boy, oh. my girl, it just flipped. She'd think it'd be just great. Soldier, would you just step aside? Come, come on, come on. <laughs> How's this for your front page? Never fear. Maloney's here. Come on, oh, buddy, take my picture. Take it, take it. Come Rudy, on, would you please? Here comes the captain. Uh, Captain Lieutenant Patrick, Captain, hmm? just one minute. And whether it's a recession or a depression, a disaster like a fire or a flood, or even a man-killing tiger that's gotten loose, it's important to have a governor who'll jump right in and do what needs to be done. You've got to call a governor and tell him to call this thing off. Tell him what? Tell him not to let these soldiers go floundering around in the fog or they're going to drive that tiger up in the hills. We've got a thousand square miles of open country up there. If he gets that far, they might never catch him. Nobody will be safe. Then I'd say it's time to get off the dime. Get him before he's had a chance to wander that far. That's why the governor felt he had to step in. Time going by, not a thing being done. From the information we've received, this fog could last for days. This tiger could be miles away before the search is resumed. Captain, just one more question. Lieutenant Patrick, excuse me, gentlemen. Okay, Lieutenant, let's move it out. Yes, sir. All right, all you squad leaders, get your men in the trucks. We're moving out right now. Let's go. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a devil. Well, we might as well go along and see if we can lend a hand. Looks like we got more kibitzers and soldiers. Mr. Grant! Mr. Grant! Hold it, hold it, I'm coming! All right, let's go. I wonder if it takes all this to put on a tiger hunt in Africa or India or wherever the heck it is. Well, they come hunting a lot of things, Vern. Headlines, pictures, trophies, excitement, and publicity. Not many of them come just to help out. Tiger, get that tiger! 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 Get that tiger. Get that tiger. Get that tiger.
his place, sir. Right. Do you know where he lives? You're not going to keep on, are this you? This is not my decision to make, sir. man was just shot. You better call the governor and tell him the situation here. Yeah, it was just an unfortunate chain of circumstances, that's all. Yeah, well, you move on up to the Lewis place in this fog, oh. you're liable to run into another chain of circumstances. All right. All right. Captain, if the sheriff won't cooperate, I'm sure there are a dozen people on the road who can tell you how to get to the old man's place. I said you call the governor and you tell him if anybody else gets hurt or killed in my county, I'm going to lay him right on his doorstep. On election day. Second thought. Might not be a bad idea to call up the governor. See if he's uh, got any other thoughts on the matter. Meanwhile, Governor Robbins has requested that the troops wait until the fog lifts before attempting any further maneuvers. And here's another sidelight on that story. This morning, during an on-the-spot broadcast from Scotia, the sheriff's 13-year-old daughter made a rather eloquent plea. And it seems now that thousands of youngsters all over the country are rooting for the tiger, in much the same manner that some people might go to a bullfight and cheer for the bull. 
Here we see a typical demonstration in one of the smaller towns in the southern part of the state. Save that tiger! Save that tiger! the same story with Save That Tiger demonstrations at schools and playgrounds and children working hard on parents at home. And now, little gals and buddies, I want you to get a good sharp pencil and be ready to take down the address when I give it to you so you can send in your nickels and dimes because we're going to all ship in together and we're going to Save That Tiger! Save That Tiger! Save That Tiger! Oh, that's just great. That, that's a big help. Pete, it isn't Julie's fault what other children around the country decide to do. Well, they never would have got the idea in the first place if you didn't start it. I didn't see everybody grabbing up guns and rushing out to shoot Willie Thompson when he ran away last spring. When Willie Thompson ran away last spring, he didn't go out and kill somebody ten minutes later, either. Well, what about Mr. Vanderpoel? What about him? He killed that man that tried to hold up the bank, but nobody tried to shoot him. No. That was Mr. Vanderpoel's job, dear. Besides, that man had a gun. It was self-defense. So why wasn't it self-defense for poor Raj if that man had a gun, too? Well, that's different. Why is it different? Just because he's born a tiger, does that mean... Now, that's enough. You're talking about that tiger like he was a human being. He's nothing but a big, overgrown cat. Oh, you keep out of this. from kids all over the country, sending nickels and dimes to help buy the tiger. Buy him? What do you mean, buy him? What are you talking about? Well, something Julie said on the air about wishing she could buy the whole family of tigers and put them in a zoo or something. Oh, all right, you can send it all back to see every nickel and every dime. That isn't going to be too easy. Why? Most of them are just signed, Billy H or Annie B. They don't have any return addresses. No, fine. Well, that's just dandy. You know, the kids sure think that you're an all right guy. Don't want the tiger shot and promise to take him alive? Look, I didn't promise him anything. Now you can tell him. Well, there's got to be 10,000 standard ways a guy can get himself behind the eight ball. Why do I have to find something new and different? Maybe he'll feel better about tomorrow. this turned out to be, I should have followed my first hunch. Strictly hands off. Well, fortunately, the little monsters aren't allowed to vote. All right, so maybe you got a few million friends among the small fry around the country. A handful of clergymen. But the registered voters of this county are getting mighty fed up, Pete. All right, I'm sorry. Well, it's not fair to the others on the ticket. You'll probably take half of them down with you. Well, what do you want me to do, withdraw? No. No, Pete, nobody wants you to withdraw. Just go on the air. Make it plain that all this uh, Save the Tiger campaign is not your idea. Remember, we got the time bought already. Now, if you like, we'll get some of the boys to help you write a nice little speech of washing your hands of it. I can't do that. You owe it to the people who elected you, Pete. Let them know that you're interested in protecting them. Not in some escaped tiger that's got them shaking in their boots. Tell them it's a misunderstanding. Well, uh, that put me on a defensive, wouldn't it? I mean, that wouldn't be smart politically. What well, do you think this is smart? What you're doing? Oh, I don't know, Pete. You and I don't talk the same language. Bye, Miss Williams. Goodbye. Hi, Pete. Come on. Daddy, I'm glad you didn't do like they said. I mean, about going on the air. You are. You're glad. Uh, Julie, hand me that packet of letters, please. 
Did you know that Mr. Kelso has offered to sell the whole Tiger family for only $9,500? No. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a fine position I'm in. If I want to hang on to my lousy job, I've got to go on the air and disillusion about a million kids and practically call my own daughter a liar. And if I don't, I'm just greasing the skids under a lot of nice guys that don't have anything to do with this mess in the first place. Now, Pete, it isn't that bad. Now, Julie, are you beginning to get maybe an inkling of what it can lead to when you talk too much about something you don't understand? Well, at least you're not as bad off as poor Raja. There isn't anybody anxious to shoot you. There's always that. Additional military equipment and more troops are being sent into the Scotia area under the command of Colonel Will Marion, preparatory to an all-out assault if and when the fog lifts. Political like that? The the That's perfect, well, Mr. Wilson. You sure now? I know your daddy likes his pretty well done. It's kind of thick. Oh, it's all right, though. It's for, well, some special friends. Yeah, they like their meat kind of rare. <laughs> Have Mom get you that king-size box of crunchies, and be sure to tell your grocer Uncle Harry sent you. And now back to Julie Williams and little Roger Jr. And you were saying, Julie? Well, one more thing that Mr. Singh told me. A tiger doesn't have a kill just for sport like some hunters do. They kill for what they absolutely need to eat, and they won't kill again till it's all gone. That's interesting to know. Thank you very much, Julie. And back here, of course, is our mother tiger, who's been waiting all this time for her mate to return to her, wondering where he is and why he hasn't come home to his family. And now, let's go over to our tigermometer and see the results of our campaign, guys and gals. According to our latest reports, we're well over halfway to our goal. So keep those nickels and dimes coming in, because remember, we gotta save that tiger. Roar! Save, save that, that tiger! tiger. Roar. Save that tiger! Hey, what happened to the stakes? What stakes? Oh, I ran into Mr. Wilson on the street and he said something about some steak. He uh, said he hoped they weren't too thick. Well, that's silly. He always cut some special for me so they won't be. Would you please pass the butter? Thank you. Uh, would you happen to know anything about this? About what, Daddy? Thank you, Mother. Did you by any chance have Mr. Wilson pick out some nice thick steaks? I may have. Sometime. Oh, when Grandma was here last year, she always liked to... Today? Tigers have got to eat, too. You bought steaks and charged them to my account and fed them to the tigers? You said once that every prisoner's got to be fed and looked out after properly. What prisoner? And it's the sheriff's job to see to it. What prisoner? Well... You told Mr. Singh he couldn't move the trucks, so the tigers have to stay in their cages. And they're just as much prisoners as anybody in the county jail. Oh, well, this is ridiculous. I come home and I get meatloaf. We can't even afford steak, but she goes out. No, this is too much. I've had it. A guy can just take so much. Oh, now, Pete. Now, you listen to me, young lady. You're not too old to spank, you know. I can still put you over my knee if I have to. Now, I'm telling you, you just try one more thing. Well, now, what did I do? I used to be able to talk to you her. You weren't talking to her. You were yelling at her. You've oh. been yelling at her ever since this whole business started. Oh, come on. Not you two. I got enough pressure on me all day long. Everybody's throwing harpoons at me. I can't even come home. The thing is, Pete, we have talked to her. Almost from the day we brought her home from the hospital. We're the ones that taught her animals aren't put on this earth just to be kicked around. That they have certain rights, just like people. I know, honey, but you got to use a little sense. Who is it taught her that justice is important? That you have to do what's right. Not just in the big things, but in the little things. And not just when it's convenient, but when it... 
louses up everything for you. You trying to tell me I'm wrong? <laughs> You're never wrong, dear. Just try to see the way she feels. We've taught her all these things and drawn pretty definite ideas on what's right and what's wrong. Now all of a sudden it's all mixed up. Even her own mother and father don't seem to believe in the things they've taught her. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes, uh, it's kind of a funny thing, but sometimes you do a thing that you know deep down inside isn't exactly right. But then you figure that you have to do it, so uh, that's the thing you get touchy about. And you don't want to talk about it, see? You mean about me ordering the steaks, letting Mr. Wilson think that Mama sent me? No, no, honey, I mean about me. Because I wouldn't listen to you a million other kids either. And I guess I must have known all along that you were right. And you were a lot closer to being right than a bunch of grown-ups that were crying wolf and yelling for blood all the time. So, I don't know exactly what I can do now because it's kind of out of my hands. But if there's any way I can get in there and get that tiger alive, I'm gonna try. And that's a promise. Hey, you know, I might go and see that Mr. Singh here is tomorrow. Maybe he can teach me a few fine points on how to catch a tiger, huh? Come on, let's go get some of your mother's meatloaf. Huh? Yeah, that's probably it, operator. Go ahead and ring it, will you? I've never heard of such things. Are you sure they have them? Oh, sure, they got... Hello, Dr. Martin? Are you the Dr. Martin that's cured of the mammals at the zoo? Uh, the, well, this is Sheriff Williams in Scotia. Yeah, that's right. Now, what I want to ask you, Doctor, do you have one of those tranquilizer guns at the zoo? You do? Well, could it knock the tiger down and put him to sleep? Well, Sheriff, you're asking two different things there. You can put him to sleep with a good jolt of sequestrin, but you won't exactly knock him down when you hit him. No, sir. It'll, it'll take anywhere from a minute and a half to two minutes for it to take effect. Uh, what I'm trying to say, Sheriff, when he's not in a cage of some kind, a tiger can do a lot of damage in that length of time. And he's going to be in a mighty ugly mood once you've hit him. Yeah, yeah. How much range can he get on one of those guns? Oh, I see. Well, I'd like to borrow it anyway if I can. The weatherman uh, says his fog might lift tomorrow. Well, I guess about the quickest way to be to put it on the bus, we can clear it at your end, be here in a couple hours. Well, thank you, Doctor. Appreciate that. What'd he say? Will it put a tiger to sleep? Sure. Well, how far can you shoot with it? Well, not too far. Gee, what a wonderful thing. You can go hunting and shoot something, but not kill it. It just goes to sleep. Yeah, it's great. that question of the wrong man. This is strictly Colonel Marion's affair. I'm here only as an observer. Oh, Governor oh, Robbins, this is Sheriff Williams. Sheriff, I am sorry I couldn't get here sooner. I know what you've been up against. Well, since so far, you haven't missed a thing. Now, Governor, how are we going to pay our respects to the general? Governor, 
Gordon Robbins. I'm glad you could get here, sir. It's an honor. Now, you see, we have quite an operation going here. Yes, indeed you do. Quite an operation. Quite an Thank you, sir. Now, here in Scotia, it was at this point over here that the... Now, Colonel, since the fog has cleared, I think we can get on with Operation Tiger, eh? All right, sir. Baker Company has its CP set up here. Oh, uh, Governor oh. Robbins, this is Captain Anderson, commanding Baker Company. Captain? Now, Baker Company is all ready to move in, and we have a helicopter raking every foot of the area. Good, good. I want, Rocky, to one, we'll I want this all. operation to be Pardon one me, of Governor. vast... That's the chopper. Brown Gate 1 to Eagle CO. Eagle CO. Come in, Brown Gate 1. I think we've spotted something. About the center of Sector Charlie, about three miles north of the lake. We're trying to get in closer. We spotted him! We spotted a tiger. We're directly over the target. Check our position. He hasn't come out of the brush. We could see him if he came out. Over. Eagle CO to Brown Gate 1. This is the Colonel speaking. You stay on target. Keep in contact here. Do you read me? Over? Yes, sir. Over. Uh, Anderson, move your company in. Oh, sir, give me a room. Five minutes. Thanks, Spider. Oh, sir, get those tucks filled on the double. Okay. Come in from this direction. Warm a perimeter around the entire area, and whatever you do, don't let that cat get out of there. Yes, sir. What's going on? They just spotted him from the air. It won't be long now. What are we going to do? Sheriff, lend us a hand, will you? Keep these civilians back. And those reporters. Now, just a minute, Captain. Just a minute. You're not going to shut out the press, are you? The radio and TV boys? All I want is room to move. Well, this isn't a military dictatorship, you know. These people oh, have a right to know what's going on. Governor, you just worry about getting the tiger, Captain. Let these other boys worry about getting the pictures. After all, they've got a job to do, too. Yes, sir. Of course you can't go along. I don't you understand. All right, there's something I wish you would do for me. Will you stay here and see if that tranquilizer gun comes in on the bus? And if it does, have somebody send it right up to us. All right? Now you want to do something to help, don't you? All right, now it's the most important thing you can do. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. position along that ridge and then I want patrols deployed on this side clear around to that saddle I want the whole area surrounded yes sir Stay look alive. Corporal Peacock CO to Brown Gate 1 are you directly over target can you see him over Brown Gate 1 to Peacock CO we do not repeat we do not have visual contact with target at this time we saw him go into this underbrush area. We have not seen him come out. So he's in there somewhere, Captain. Over. Peacock CO to Brown Gate 1. Roger. Keep looking for him. Out. Got a shadow right down your puss. Oh, right there. Oh, wait, uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Governor, uh, we better turn this around. Somebody might recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> you checked their positions. Nobody's seen a cat. Well, he's down there someplace. I just want to say one thing. That what we are seeing here 
is something far more than the search for an escape tiger. What we are seeing here is just what can be done when the full resources of this state are utilized, and I say to you that there is nothing that we cannot achieve if we make intelligent use of, uh, of our resources and our manpower with a dedicated, unswerving singleness of purpose. Did you need another one? Yes, sir. Well, uh, uh, Governor, we have a lot more. Tell the men to stay where they are and keep alert. Well, how long are we going to wait? Till the cat comes out. When it gets dark, you won't be able to Lieutenant, see Lieutenant, if you want to go down there on a private reconnaissance, you have my permission. I'm sorry, Patrick. I just don't want to risk any lives unnecessarily. Uh, Captain, if you don't mind a suggestion, you've got the tiger surrounded now, haven't you? Yeah. Well, before you do anything else, could you let the trainer go in there and try to get him with his net? You think you can do that? He might even come to me, because he will be frightened. He knows I'm his friend. Well, if we hold our perimeter, keep him caged in. Okay, let him try. Roger! Where are you, boy? Roger! You, you, you there with the net. Stop right where you are. Oh, Captain. May I ask just what you think you're doing? Well, sir, I was giving that man a that chance. That tiger and... has killed one trainer already, hasn't he? You're just going to let him try for two. Well, sir, you seem to think that... Aren't people going to wonder about it, Captain? We spend thousands of dollars to move these troops up here and then just let them stand around while a civilian does the job and maybe gets himself killed? Raja will not attack me. I am his friend. Uh, Governor, it seems to me that if anyone knows that tiger and what he'd do in a given situation, he's your man. Uh, it seems to me you're the man who was on the soapbox a few days ago with all kinds of threats about what you'll do if anybody else got hurt. Look, I asked for a little common sense. All I said was wait for the fog to lift. One man got himself shot when he wandered into the target area accidentally. Now you're going to send another man in there on purpose. Don't talk to me about common sense. You know what your job is here, Captain. I suggest you get on with it. Yes, sir. All right. Come on back. Hey, Julie, the tranquilizer gun finally came. Mr. Evans, Mr. Evans, you've got to get this gun up to my father as fast as you can. Oh, gee, I'd sure like to, but I've got a long distance call in for the editor of the Herald. He's going to call back. See, I wrote some special material, got the whole thing started, and it... Well, it's, it's real important. I might even get a byline. Mr. Banks, huh? could you take a tranquilizer gun up to my father? He's past your place where the soldiers are. A tranquilizer gun? Well, that's about the silliest thing i ever heard of. Get in the back, Tom. Could you at least take us as far as your place? We can hike from there oh. if we have to. Tigers on the loose, tranquilizer guns. The man can't get his farm work done. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moving to reduce perimeter, sir. Good. Set up some mortars along the rise. Set a fire pattern to drive him out in the open. Either he comes out or we blow him sky high. Yes, sir. Sergeant! I want two 60s and two 81s. Spread them out here along the rise. That would be the last thing Raja would do. Run out into the open. What if they make it too hot for him down there? He would go higher up in the hill and look for a place to escape over that ridge. There, in among those rocks, he will keep as much cover as he can. What's on the other side of that saddle, Vern, you remember? Yeah, that's the uh, gorge going down to the old camping grounds. Yeah, nothing but open country beyond. I am sure he will go that way. How can I get to the camping ground? Perhaps I can wait with my net. When he comes out, I will be ready. There is an old back road. Goes around the other way. Well, let's go. You will come with me? Yeah, I just hope I can remember everything you told me about throwing on those nets. All right, I want the 81 set up over here, the Peacock 60 beyond. Peacock Brown Gate 1. Well, we will fire for effect right from the start. Keep out of range and let us know how we're doing. Out. 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 Tranquilizer gun! <laughs> Ad -Z. 
Zig. You hear that? And I will face Raja on the ground here. Please hurry. gets by us. Daddy! I told you not to come. But there wasn't anybody to bring the gun. She's right, it was us or nobody. The witch McCulloch's are in here. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. Please don't shoot him. Charlie Dog and Peacock CO. The tiger's broken through our perimeter. He's heading down the hill to the northeast. Guess we're out. Here he comes. Pete! Come on, get in the car. Roll those windows up. Go on, move! He's not coming straight down. He's headed over that way. you down the hill. I'll go get the kit. Mommy. I'm all right. He's all right, too. Better give him a couple more blasts just to make sure. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Your state of emergency is over. Yeah, hell it. Come on. Well, Governor, I see the sheriff got the tiger. Yes, yes, he did. And uh, I can't tell you how delighted I am because naturally. Uh, it is the uh, welfare of the people of this great state that is my uh, principal concern. Natural.
I'm glad he's in there and we're out here. Now, before we start the formal dedication, I want you to meet our special guest, Sheriff Williams of Weldon County. <laughs> Newly re-elected sheriff, I might add. I think you know why we asked him here today. He saved that tiger. 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 He saved that tiger.